Hi, my name is Patrick Gookin. I'm a product manager with Microfocus, and I work on the Identity Governance and Administration Solution, or our Identity Governance and Administration Solution. And today, I'd like to talk about one aspect of that solution that we call decision support. A big element of IGA, or a proper IGA implementation, is being able to connect the business user to the IT and, and the security and compliance users or, or administrators. Because um, the business user has more of the information, they, they're the people that really should be making the decisions about access. So in the case of a certification review, typically in an annual cert certification review, it'll be a supervisor review and the supervisor will be asked whether or not someone should have access. And that's good. We want the person that's responsible to, to make that decision. But if that person isn't invested in the process, and if they don't have the proper information about it, there's a very high likelihood that they won't really take it seriously. They're gonna be very reluctant to remove access from a user. Um, so they might rubber stamp it, right? Just get through the process, just make a decision to yeah, keep all the access and move on. And that really reduces the uh, effectiveness of your access certifications and really kind of makes it kind of a useless process. So to correct that, we wanna bring as much information as possible to the decision maker, the business decision maker. So as I said, we really in governance want to have the business, the people that are closest to the, to the users make the decisions about access, but we need to inform them about who those users are, what the access is, how important it is, how risky it is, whether it's typical access and so forth. So we, we provide this ability to use analytics to generate a lot of statistics and data and supporting information about the, the user and the permissions and, and the access in general, and present that in line in the uh, in the process. So here's a screenshot, but rather than dealing with screenshots, I'm gonna jump right over to show the, um, the actual application. So here is our identity governance system, and I'm gonna go here on the top and show our catalog to start with. Um, the catalog really is the central, um, the central data store for identity governance. And this is where we gather in all the information about all of the identities or users that are in your system, the applications that you're governing, the permissions and accounts within those applications in the in the, the mapping between users and permissions, like who has access to what. So we do this process of gathering all the data into governance. And then once it's in there, you can perform these certification reviews, right? So a certification review, we support um, several different types of reviews, and it's a very, very flexible system. So what we allow you to do is to create any kind of uh, criteria that you want to from, I wanna review everybody's access to everything to a very small subset of that, maybe even just this person's access to this one thing. And there's a really robust system of defining the criteria to select either the users that you wanna narrow it down to or include the permissions that you wanna include or narrow it down to and the accounts and so forth. So it's, it's um, and you can do that based on many different criteria. You can say everybody that's in a certain department or people that are uh, have a certain risk value or just everybody that has this particular application or is a full-time employee and any kind of combination of those things. And those are our user access reviews. Essentially, we wanna review from the perspective of a user, if they have this access, we wanna review it. We also support account reviews. So if you just wanna just want to do a review of an account, um, and, the, and actually, if you want to do a review of, from the perspective of an account, you're not really as concerned about who the user is, but you really want to know what this account is able to do, regardless of who is using that account. You can create those kind of reviews as well. You can also create reviews that review the identity information of a user, and you can do that um, as a self-review. So many companies have a process prior to doing their annual certification review, they want to make sure that there's a process where people go in and correct their identity data, make sure that that's up to date. And then maybe their supervisor also reviews that data or reviews the reporting structure. We support that as well. To prepare the organization and prepare the data for the certification review. Um, we also have permission reviews. You can review the definition of a role, for example. Is this business role appropriate? Does it have the right criteria? Does it have the right members? Does it grant access to the proper things? So there's a really robust way of defining these review processes within our identity governance system. And then once those review processes are created and initiated, then the end user ends up getting notified and they go in and they work on that. So I wanna show from their perspective what they see um, as an end user. I'm gonna log out of here.
Okay, I'm gonna log in as Tom Burt. Tom is a supervisor, so he's been assigned to do, or to participate in the annual supervisor review. So as part of that, he would have gotten an email that notified him that he needed to do this, and he would have followed that to the application. And then he could look in the menu item for reviews and see that he's been assigned a couple of reviews. And this one here, the annual supervisor review, he's been assigned that he hasn't done any work yet, so he still has 131 items to review, and he has nine days to do it. So if he clicks this, he can see all of those items, and just this is a full list of everything. He could start working on this if he chose to, or he could choose to organize it differently, to group it by the application or the user, or any other kind of ways to the to kind of he prefers to work. We're gonna check, pick a group by user, and then you get a list of all, he'll get a list of all the users in his organization, and he can expand these and collapse these and work on them one by one. So let's look at Albert Monday. Albert has 27 permissions to work on. If we look at one of them, like service support administrator, we can expand that. And we're basically asking the supervisor to say, is this appropriate access for this person? And we want them to certify that it is or choose to that it's not and remove that access from the user. So here we look, and the one thing, the thing I really wanted to focus on was the decision support information that we're providing. So our analytics system is running and churning against all the data that we have in governance. And it's making some, uh, building a set of information, decision support information that we then provide to the supervisor. So the first one is it's not authorized by a business rule. So that gives you an indication that this is an exception of some sort where we try to say that we use a business rule model to define appropriate access for users across the system. And this is one case that person doesn't have the access. That doesn't mean they shouldn't have it, but it does, it is kind of a red flag that, well, there's something that's not like pre-authorized, if you will. So it's good information for the supervisor to know that. Um, and then it says information here, 0.06% of all users have this permission. So that's an indication that for all the users in the, in the company, in the organization, a very small percentage ha actually have this service support administrator permission. But 100% of users who are like Albert have this permission. So that's an indication that it's probably something that is typical, right? Um, and then the next one is, is really critical. This is showing you when the last time this user actually logged into the application. So now looking at this information, if I was Tom, without this information, I'd probably say, well, I don't want to disturb Tom's access. I'm just going to approve it. There's no reason to take it away. And most of my people have that access. But now I see that even though most people in my organization have it, this user last logged in <clears throat> on July 20th of 2018. So it's been a year and a half since he's even used this access. So that's a really good indication that maybe he really doesn't need it. And, uh, and that's really important because a lot of times people just, we give them the access because it, it's just what you do, but then they, if they're not using it, it's, it's not necessary. It's really not least privilege, right? It's, it's allowing them to have access they don't really need. So again, it's really helping that supervisor make a, an informed decision. And then we can look at um, more details about the application itself. If there are any sub permissions to that application, we can look at more details about the user. So here we can see, you know, who this user is. Hopefully we know if they're our employee, who they are and what they look like, but maybe not. Maybe we're doing some other kind of broader review. Uh, their title, their email, um, what their status is, what their risk value is. This is 142. We have an entire risk system that takes into account the user, um, what they do, what the risk of the access that they have, um, any violations that, that are outstanding against this user, either expired certifications or SOD violations or other exceptions, and calculates a risk value. Um, and then that, that helps that the, the supervisor make a decision as well. So, you know, bottom line is what we're really trying to do, and this is a, an example in, in the review process, but across governance, anytime that we engage with a business user, let's give them as much information as possible to help them make the, make the best decision as possible, because we really want them to be involved in the process, but we don't want it to just be rubber stamping and, and just doing it for the sake of doing it. We really want to use it as, a, as an important control to improve um, compliance and security. So I'm going to go back over to our presentation. And um, that's what we just talked about with certification reviews.
And then the request and approval is another area where we also provide this kind of information. And we try to, we do as much as we can to help the end user um, have a better experience and be more engaged in the process. And this case is an example of how you can brand it for your organization. So this is branding it with colors and logos and so forth so that the, the person that's using this application feels comfortable um, in the application and, and making decisions. You can, again, we can add all of that kind of decision support information for an approver. In this case, it's a request uh, screen where the requester is given information about what the permission is and what's required um, for them to, to enter uh, to make the request. And then if it goes for approval, the approval process would also be able to present, is this access appropriate for this person? Is it covered by a business role? Is it typical that this person has that access or not? And so forth. So um, doing whatever we can to help help improve the, uh, the effectiveness of decisions, which is a really important concept in governance. So that's, um, that's decision support. Thank you.